afternoon, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I'm Helen. And we are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. Look, we got something in the mail. So I went out to uh, check and see because we're expecting a package. And this was out there and I had no idea what it was. And I'm saying to Helen, um, what did we order? Wait, what did we order from Amazon? And then um, I opened it up and there's a packet full of the candy, um, the candy Jewelry. necklaces. Yeah. And I'm like, did you order this? <laughs> like, I did not order these. <laughs> ordered candy necklaces. They are sent with love and best wishes to my sisters of the heart for the many happy hours spent watching and laughing from Kathleen Baker. So thank you so, so much, much, Kathleen. Thank you. Um, my neck is a little bit bigger than it was when I was a child, so I'm wearing mine as a bracelet. <laughs> But there are a whole bunch of them, so yeah. thank you so very much. That was such a nice surprise. Um, and I know two little boys who are going to be very, very excited, and we will be the cool ants because yes. we're sending one down to each of them. So, And maybe one down to the little one because we don't want any meltdowns, but um, right. his parents can decide whether he can have it or not. Um, so, yeah, no, thank you so, so much. You sent enough for us to share, so that's that's just awesome. Right. Um, you brought enough for the whole class. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Really. It was such a nice surprise. So, um, we get to live. That's our treat for after lunch. Um, okay. So I will sit and knit and gnaw on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We've been seeing a lot of people releasing advent calendars. It's like all of a sudden it's the season to release right. the advent calendar. And we've had a couple of questions, and yes, we are going to be doing an advent calendar this year. Um, we are not going to release it until probably the beginning of April. Uh, yeah, we have a, we're working out a couple things um, so that we want to release, because we're going to have a couple different options, and we right. want to release them all together so everybody knows what all their options are, um, and we just have to work out. Right. couple things. So. However, we have also gotten questions about the Halloween advent calendar. So we are putting up the listing today for the Halloween advent calendar. <sighs> yeah. Too many yarn fumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we are, uh, today we are releasing the first round for the Halloween advent calendars. It's going to be very similar to last year. 13 days, 13 20 gram mini skeins, possibly two 10 gram mini skeins. I'm not going to guarantee anything based on last year. Yeah. Um, we're going to work towards 13, 20 gram mini skeins. Um, and, um, we, our theme is Salem 1692. Yeah. So right at around the same time of the Salem witch trials. Right. So, you know, can you tell that like the ones, the ones in the future, future witches, witches have made <laughs> any kind of impression on us? Uh, well, actually it's really right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's right, perfect. It so, so um, that will be the theme. Um, it is just for uh, the yarn. No bag option this year. We might offer a bag option to add on later in the year, but right now, no bag option. Just yarn. Right. Um, so grab it while you can. Yes. We're... Okay. They, oh, and they will ship uh, mid-September-ish. Yeah. And I was going to say, we're really very excited about this, but we say that about everything. Right. However, we're really very excited about this. We love the idea of the theme and everything. So we're, it's, we're looking yeah, we forward to really it. really good ideas. Yeah. So. It's going to be cool. Yeah. So join us. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it, right? Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. That was all the admin -y type of things that we had to talk about. Yeah. All right. So shall we talk about Moxie? Yes. All right. If you haven't seen it, Moxie is a show that's on Netflix. It's a movie. Um, Amy Poehler is the producer, I think. Yeah. Was she the writer too? No, no. It, I don't know. It, I mean, it, it's based on a book. So right. It's not an original, but anyway, Amy uh, Poehler is behind it. Yeah. It's a it's a story about a girl in high school, um, who decides to have a slight rebellion. And, um... Well, she doesn't like the way f uh, pe people are being mis um, treated in the high school. Well, yeah. She's fed up with uh, the inequalities of the way people are treated. Okay. So. Um, and she decides... Uh, the way she decides to start fighting it 
um, is to write a newsletter that she labels Moxie, um, but it's an anonymous newsletter and it urges people to do certain things like um, put stars and hearts on your hand in support of such and such. Right. Or um, one of the girls has um, is sent home because she's wearing a tank top. And um, so she says, you know, in, to stand up for her right to wear the tank top, everybody wear a tank top one right. day, that kind of thing. So, um, and it's about how all the girls in this high school gather together to um, fight things that are really totally unfair. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, the, the you know, star quarterback yeah. getting all the the scholarships and the, the attention and, you know, he's not, you know, the football team doesn't win any games yet the girls soccer team is first in the state and they uh, wear used, you know. Old uniforms. Old uniforms and get no recognition whatsoever. So um, And the football team gets everything. And the girl, you know, the captain of the soccer or the head soccer player, you know, could actually really use the scholarship. Um, so it's just, it's, um, um, it's an aggravating situation. Well, there are a couple of spots during it that I found um, aggravating and almost cringeworthy. Yeah. The one um, where... Um, when Lucy is just shot down completely and talked over in class, that right. one was, that was aggravating. Well, that, and also when she's in the principal's office and she's saying that the, he's harassing her and, you know, well, it's not, you really need to rethink that. And... Right. When she use the H word, then I have to fill out all sorts of forms right. and it becomes official. And, um, but the cringeworthy part to me was when um, he was by the soda machine, and when oh. she wouldn't come on, when she wouldn't accept his advances, he spat in her soda and then handed it to her, and that was cringeworthy enough. But the fact that the main character Veronica, or Vivian, not Veronica, Vivian, watched it and didn't do anything about it, and then later in the hallway said, "Just ignore him." Yeah, that to me was cringeworthy. That was, but that was a product of the environment, right? Because that's the way they've been getting by: is you just put your head down and don't get noticed, right? Um, because there's also the whole list of um, everybody being ranked, um, so that it's just. I mean, it's high school, and it, but it's it's not right. And no. the fact that they stand up. Is the part that I love. Right. Um, I like the way they did it. The way yeah. they stood up to everybody. The way it was. Um, I'm glad that Vivian finally came out and said that she was the author behind it. I would have liked to have had her say it a little bit earlier. Right. But I understand how you have to draw it out for the story. Um, and um, I like the way all the girls kind of gathered behind her and Lucy. Yeah. Um, I did not like the way... I thought Lucy should have been more of a main character. I thought that she has... She was almost the driving force behind it. Well, she wasn't it. even almost. She was the driving force because Vivian admired her so much for saying, you know, no, I'm, you know, why am I putting my head down? I'm, my head is going up proudly. Right. Um, so that it's just, you know, I wish she had... Her, her arc didn't seem to... Vivian went from the quiet wallflower to standing up for herself and saying, yes, I am the person behind this. Right. Whereas Lucy went from this proud person that was saying, no, I'm not going to do that, to almost becoming matter of fact, you know? And Well, it was just a very flat arc because yeah. she didn't go anywhere. And it would have been it, nice if just, they had given yeah. her the same kind of right. arc. I mean, I understand that you have two hours which tell the story and you had to get the romance in there and and he and he was very key to the whole situation yeah um but uh there were just you know it, overall when i watched the movie i loved it i was just you know when i was empowered i'm like yes right but then you start to think about it and certain things did bother me during the movie and i think the thing that bothered me as it was happening was the teacher he was so condescending and so, you know, well, I guess we can't say things like that anymore. And then at the end, he gets to hold up his hand and have the hearts and flowers on it to say he's behind them. Right. I'm like, no, you don't get off that easy. Um, so that I, I just, I didn't, I didn't like that at all. Um, and I didn't like the principal at all. 
Uh, I Although it, I like the I love Marcia, Marcia Gay, Gay Harden, and I'm just like, okay, it's just they didn't you, do you any favors. Oh no. Um, and her turnaround at the end to me was ridiculous. She wouldn't have turned like that so fast. Yeah. Um, and then the one thing that you and Damien pointed out, uh, Damien's our brother, um, was the no consequences. And that does now bother me. It didn't bother me when I was watching it. But the fact that there were certain things that they did that did not have any consequences for Vivian when they should. And I think that they should show consequences because she's meant to uh, empower young females. Right. And they should also be taught that, you know, defacing school property. Whereas, you know, I am probably behind doing it. There has to be consequences for doing it. Right. Um, and if I were your parent, I would make you live out the consequences, but I would be proud of you. Um, but still, you have to have, there has to be consequences for going that far. Right. So. The other thing that um, kind of bothered me was the cheerleader was raped by the star uh, quarterback the year before. You do not see any of it. I understand and I bought the whole thing of her leaving a note for the uh, whoever was behind Moxie saying that this had happened to her and she was afraid to come forward and that kind of thing. And um, I completely believed that part of it. But at the end where she's getting up and saying everything, I didn't think they gave it. I, I can understand how you can get to that point. I don't think they showed enough of it. Yeah. You know, I think there were key pieces that were missing that were taken out because of timing for the film, but then the ending didn't make sense. Or it just, you missed out on certain things. Um, her best, Vivian's best friend is Chinese. Yeah. Um, and at one point, she's not supporting Vivian and the other girls the way Vivian would like her to. And she finally has it out with her. And um, her friend says, you know, you're not in my shoes. You have no idea what it is like for me as an Asian American to be doing this. And you had a point that you didn't have to bring in the Asian American right. part of it. It was, I mean, it was almost like a token statement so that we've like, oh, okay, so we, we, we've, uh, we've covered that group right um and I, I you know you didn't need to say it you just you know it could have been a very easy statement of you know you don't know what it's like right you know i'm very i have a lot of pressure on me from my parents right um and it didn't have to be it was almost tokenism right and so. it was it was also it just it kind of showed up there you know it was i thought her character needed a little bit more fleshing out also so that you could really see why she's having this because she Meltdown. was actually more of a hero than Vivian, right? Because um, she was, she was, she wasn't wearing the tank top that the day that everybody wore the tank top, but she was the one that stood up for Vivian and took the blame for something. And she's the one that formed the group. I mean, they all were just sitting there going, "I can't believe she did this. I can't believe that she did this." And Claudia is the one that said, "Okay, all right, let's work around it." Right. And she went and worked around it, and she didn't, you know, wring her hands or anything. She just went and did it. So yeah. Um, and then there was the whole, um, conversation between Vivian and her mother when her mother's boyfriend was there, because all of a sudden now she's got a boyfriend. Um, although you did see a little bit of that progression, so that no, you, you did. you saw that in the supermarket. And but, um, so. when she was having the discussion with her mother in her room after her meltdown at dinner, and, um, all of a sudden she's just like, why doesn't dad want to see me for Christmas? And it's like, there's, there's nothing about her father other than she went to her father's wedding and it was two hours full of roomy poems or something like that. Um, and then the fact that you know that her parents are no longer together. Right. But other than that, there was absolutely nothing about her father. And all of a sudden this comment comes out and it makes absolutely no, no sense. I mean, it, it works in with the whole, I mean, she's being a teenager. Um, and it was just like, you know, the underlining thing to the whole thing is why doesn't dad want to see me? Um, except that you didn't, that wasn't the story. Right. So it was just, it was weird. And I, I think that is probably a product of the book and everything else got edited out or right. whatever. So. so I'm kind of wondering if anybody has seen it who's read the book, did it make more sense? Because right. I know that um, 
I remember the first time when I went and saw the first Harry Potter movie, a lot of people around missed a lot of things because they hadn't read the books. And when you read the books, then you automatically put You're in, filling in yeah. what you need to. Um, and neither of us have read the books, so we're wondering, does some of this make more sense? Is right. it more fleshed out in the book? I thought it was a good story. I thought the actors were very, very good. Even yeah. the one that did the star quarterback who was... Oh, he was hateful. He was, yeah, they yeah. really did not like him. Um, I I just read that it was actually Patrick, Schwarz, Patrick Schwarzenegger. So, um, yeah, it was full of kids because uh, the student council president. Yeah. He's um, Julia Louis Dreyfus's son. Oh, yeah. I did so, see that. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I thought the acting was good. I thought the story, for the most part, was good. There were just little bits it was and pieces. A, it, was a that surface, it, was just like, it was a surface good, and then right. it's one of those things where it's like you should just go away and just walk away. Yeah. And don't sit and think about it. So. so. But it's, I mean, it's a weighty enough subject that you do sit and think about it so that it... One thing it did remind me is you could not pay me enough to go back to high school. Oh, my God, no. I did not like high school. I mean, granted, I was in an all-girls high school, but still didn't like high school. Yeah, based on this high school, I wouldn't have liked it if I had been in a co-ed nope. high school. So. Send me back to college. Yeah. Loved my college years, but high school, not so much. All right. All right. So I think that is us for today. Yep. We hope you guys have a great weekend. Go forth and create. And we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.